Hey everybody, it's me, Vic. So <laughs> I have been trying to do this video for a while. I wanted to be precise when I was talking about certain things with NVIDIA GPUs. Unfortunately, can't speak about AMD GPUs because I don't own one. Um, but if I were to, I guess I would be able to test it out. Now, I'm a little bummed that AMD doesn't have a guide the way NVIDIA does for OBS. Um, what I would recommend for AMD uh, users Go ahead and do the setup wizard and whatever the setup wizard says, just leave it as is. I know it would be ideal to tweak those things, but until AMD comes out with an official guide for OBS, I would say hands off, just do the auto wizard. Now for NVIDIA, you could do the same thing. And uh, if you're wanting to do, do a little bit more. more advanced settings, we can actually come here to this uh, nice OBS guide that NVIDIA has compiled for us. It even talks about what your GPU can do. Um, and if you're not sure what your GPU is capable of doing as far as encoding and decoding, there's actually another site that tells you what your card is capable of. And I am gonna apologize in advance because as you can see the little preview as I'm hovering over the tab, it is super bright. They don't have a dark mode, it is beyond my control. And I'm sorry if I'm gonna flash blind y'all here in a very, very short brief moment. But um, you could type in, for example, your card 3080 Ti, right? So if I do this, oh, I guess I have to put a space, TI. So it tells you for laptop settings and it tells you for, you know, as far as your PCIe, what your card is capable of. Now, if I typed in 4090, for example, cause that is the uh, top tier <laughs> currently, it tells you it can do AV1. So my card is literally just a, you know, a generation behind. Um, this is an amazing site, so you're able to see what your NVIDIA GPU is capable of. Now let's get back to the normal screen where everything is dark. But they really need to like put our... dark mode on for people because, like, my eyes hurt. It, they were screaming at me looking at that screen. I'm sure yours were too. All right, so here, and I don't, I want to say I'm sure that NVIDIA will update this because right now they haven't put anything out for Kick. I don't do Kick streaming. I use Twitch. This is what I use. This is what I can only do on Twitch. Now, YouTube is a different story. YouTube can do AV1. YouTube can do HEVC. YouTube can do H.264. Um, YouTube can do it all currently right now. They can even do 4K video. They can do 1440p. Um, if you're doing Twitch, the max that you're going to have it at is 1080p. Um, there is talks that people can do 1440p at 120 hertz. I wouldn't recommend it. I did try it, but man, it came out so bad. Um, everything was super pixelated, um, 1080p, and I think that's just because Twitch has their own way of handling certain things and, you know, their servers and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that, that's going on with Twitch. It'd be nice if Twitch would adopt new um, encoding formats, but, uh, you know, I, I see people kind of moving away from Twitch. Right now, it's kind of, um, it's like when Mixer died. Everybody's trying to scramble where they want to go. Um, so with kick streaming coming out, everybody's kind of like moving or what is it? Platform hopping. Um, so I'm sure at some point in video, we'll post things on here for kick streaming, depending on what kick streaming encoders are allowed. Um, I'm sure maybe if you go on kicks website, maybe they might even have their own guide. I haven't looked because I'm not moving platforms, but, um, we can talk about resolution, right? And resolution, this is something that they, like, they literally broke it down on this website for you all. Um, a lot of people were, had different videos, tutorials on uh, how to set up OBS properly, even I have, and uh, I do what works for me, right? So what I have set up for me may not be ideal for you. For example, someone might have a lower end GPU than a 3080 Ti. Um, maybe they have a 1660 or, you know, I'm just choosing random numbers here, but something lower than mine. And if they're not able to do this, or maybe their internet service provider, right? They can't do, uh, what is it, 1080p. They have to drop down to 720p, uh, just depending on what their internet service provider allows them. But if they want quality videos, but they want to do it at a lower resolution, they can do that. It'll still come out crisp. And this is what these settings are here for. So NVIDIA has compiled a whole list of recommended settings. Um, and this is a trial and error. This is also um, provided by people from OBS, uh, from NVIDIA, from other YouTubers who have compiled this for these companies as well. Um, I think there was one streamer that, or I wouldn't say streamer, he's more of a YouTuber, 
um, that I followed some of his guides and I've selected what works for me may not work for like what works for him may not work for me. So I've had to adapt and uh, change a couple of settings here and there. Now I had a previous PC build and I've had to change settings due to the new build. So, you know, not, not everything is going to be a one-stop shop that makes it perfect for you, but you can configure those things. And that's basically what this guide is here to help you with based off of your PC uh, specs, based off of your GPU. And mostly the GPU is gonna be the one doing all of the encoding anyways. So this is a very comprehensive guide to follow. And it even uh, tells you based on what you're doing, what it's gonna be ideal. It even talks about game mode versus like the graphics priority. OBS has something similar. Um, I found it on a forum where they wanted you to uh, run OBS in high power mode. Um, on the uh, display graphics, adding OBS in there, um, and then of course game mode. So that way the game and the streaming uh, software, they run nicely together. And that's for that single PC setup that I was talking about. Um, and I'm a single PC setup person. So I do play games on the PC majority of the time when I'm streaming, for example, Diablo uh, 4 and uh, or Diablo 3. Um, and then there's some games that I will do through console and console is going to regard it. It's going to utilize my capture card and, uh, you know, capture card settings are a little bit different, but at least I don't have to worry about, you know, taxing my GPU. Um, and to be honest, the encoder runs the same, whether it's a PC game or a, a capture card. All right. So with that being said, we're going to minimize this. We are going to open up OBS and I'm going to talk about the settings that I use. Um, now, if you're using an external capture card, you can definitely set up an external capture card and it'll it'll work for you. Um, there are a couple of things that you're going to want to do. So if you're using a capture card from Elgato, like myself, um, you're going to want to download 4K capture utility based off of the card that you have. If you have a legacy card, then you're going to want to use Game Capture HD. Um, I would say if you haven't bought a capture card yet and you're considering streaming or uh, capturing and just like sharing with your buddies or, you know, making YouTube videos or live streaming on Twitch, Kick or whatever platform, um, I would uh, I would suggest getting a newer one. That way you can, one, have it maintained with newer software. Um, if you're looking for an external one, I definitely re recommend the HD60X. It is capable of doing VRR pass through. Um, if you're looking for something on a PCIe, depending on what your budget is, I would say go with a 460K Pro MK.2. Now, I know they're pricey, but honestly, they're worth it. So under stream, right, like if you if you're trying to go outside of the auto wizard setup and you want it to be like for yourself set up a certain way, you can come here to output. Now, mine is already set up here. Now, one thing I want to mention, because I think the screenshot that was on NVIDIA was a little confusing versus what it actually is and what it says. Um, I have mine downscaled to 1080p. 1920 by 1080 is 1080p. Um, I have my bitrate at 8500. That is the most that you can do to Twitch. So when it comes to streaming, I have my preset at uh, P7. I can actually bump that down to P5 and I'm still going to have a really great quality stream. Um, but I keep it at P7 because I know mine is capable of doing that. Um, if you're doing look ahead, you're going to want to make sure that your max B frames, and this is in advanced mode, you're going to want to make sure that your max B frames are four. If you uncheck it, you're going to change this to two. Now I'm going to keep it and have it at four. Um, and this is going to be pretty much what you're going to set up for streaming. Now, if you cannot handle P7, you can do P6, you can do P5 if you still can't handle P6. P5, I think, is probably the sweet spot for me. So, like, I will still have a decent stream and it'll still be um, really nice quality. Now, if I were to go lower than that, it looks a little weird for me. So, and, and I've tested these things out. So, you know, sometimes someone, I think, in my stream was telling me something looked pixelated. I was like, oh, let me fix that. <laughs> so, that was my error. Now, um, the other thing I made the mistake on once was changing this to uh, CQP. And I realized I set it up for what I do for recording versus streaming. Streaming, you're always going to want to do CVR. And I'm just going to point that out to you. Because if you try to do it in CQ, what was it, CQP, you're probably going to get pixelation. It, it's, it's not going to be good. All righty. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is recording, right? So for me, I do, 
I do come to the advanced instead of simple. Simple is set up by the wizard, but if I go to advanced, I already have everything configured the way that I want. So I can put where my recordings go. Um, I always have it under .mkv um, to prevent file corruption. Now the encoder, this is where the recording is gonna be ideal for me, right? Because I know my card cannot do, even though it says AV1 here, I cannot select it. So I can choose between H.264, which is what I do for streaming, or I can choose HEVC. And in this case for recordings, I'm choosing HEVC. Now, NVIDIA has provided me with recording settings. And when I choose CQP, this somehow defaults to 20. Um, I change it to 15 because mine can handle the 15. Um, and then I do the preset P7. And I change my, I change my, pro I think this is already set up, but I think I had to change one of these here. Oh, main. Okay, so when I was doing HDR for YouTube, I was switching between main 10 and main. Um, HDR is going to require main 10, but when you're doing that, you're also going to have to come here to advance. And you're going to have to change this to... Uh, 21 PQ, and I think this needs to go to limited. Yes, that's correct. It does need to go to limited. Um, I know some people have played around with the nits when it comes to HDR, and I think 300 was actually the minimum recommended. Um, I'm not changing this because I'm not actually capturing HDR and I'm not streaming the HDR to YouTube, but that's going to be for YouTube settings. Um, and that's pretty much it for setting it up with NVIDIA, right? But if I knew that I was going to have some issues, whether I was uh, streaming, I think that starting here, if you're in advance, it's probably going to be ideal to start with six and then five. Six is recommended from NVIDIA for, for those who are trying to figure out what to do if they're wanting to go under advanced settings. Now, the other thing that you want to factor in is as far as your CPU specs, right? You want to make sure that your computer can handle those things too. Um, because there's RAM, there's your CPU, you're able to check the usage. Like there's right. a lot of things that I'm doing behind the scenes here that let me know. Um, and like recording right now, my GPU is running at 63 Celsius, right? So I could actually check to see what the percentage of the, C the GPU is if I wanted to, but I don't. <laughs> I should, but I don't. Um, it's not necessary for me. Um, I just mainly check to see how hot it gets because I uh, just did this build and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have any hiccups along the way. But um, this is what I did on my new PC build. And even though I am capable of doing, you know, 4K as my base, um, for example, here, my base, I could change this all the way up to, because it's an ultra wide, I could change it all the way up to here if I wanted. Um, I don't want to do that. Now, when it talks about output, Right, like if I wanted to downscale it to example 720p, which is this one, then I want to choose Lancos always and keep my common FPS values at 60. Um, I have seen some people come here to integer FPS value and change it to like 120. You don't want to do that. You just want to keep it common FPS values at 60. Um, when you're doing a dual PC, so this is this is where we're going to talk about this screen here. When you're doing a dual PC, and I don't I don't ever downscale because I do it at 1080. Um, dual PC users. I saw one user do this and, and I kind of want to strongly advise not doing it. Um, you're, when you're setting up your capture card on your game PC, right, because your game PC is what you're cloning, um, you want to make sure that in the NVIDIA control panel, which is this thing here, I'm just waiting for it to pop up, y'all. So in this thing here, right, where it says change resolution, you want to change a refresh rate here. Um, the refresh rate was capable, I think, of doing 260 for this person's uh, screen. And um, I said, well, if the capture card is saying 144, I would go with what the capture card says. So they did. Everything started working very well. And um, then they changed it to 260. And I said, if you start seeing some weird stuff, you want to dial it back to 144. Um, some people have it to where they can... I guess, uh, take advantage of their screen monitors when they're cloning and stuff, and then they're able to pass it through. When you're passing it through, right, because it's a high refresh rate, you're still going to want to stream at 60 FPS. And that's kind of where I was going with this. Um, what you're capturing is passing through to what you're streaming. What your output is, is what you're streaming. What you're capturing is your input. Um, your input, if your capture card is capable of doing a high refresh rate, then that's great, right? Like you can 
put the refresh rate out there and then you're going to be able to do things like you normally would, for example, like a first person shooter game. Um, I think it was Valorant that I saw them do this on. If you're doing something to that nature, you are able to do those refresh rates that are high refresh rates while you're streaming or while you're recording. And then you're able to um, have it display to them at 60 frames per second. Um, that's something that you're going to always want set up there. Now I have video games that I play. For example, there's um, Soul Hackers too. The game runs at a hundred and what is it, a hundred and twenty frames per second, right? And or it does a high refresh rate. I forget what it was, but I think it's hundred and twenty. It might be hertz. I could be wrong. Um, but my monitor is capable of one forty four, so I can bump up the hertz to one forty four, right? And I could play that, but it's still going to show you through 60 FPS, which means you're still going to see that fast rate, but you're still watching the video at 60 frames per second. Um, and that's something that you don't want to change. And that's why I'm emphasizing that when it comes to setting up here. So, you know, if you're streaming to Twitch, honestly, the max that you want to do to Twitch is 1080p. Most people are mobile, so you probably want to factor in maybe 720p and you could still give them great quality because this is your base canvas, right? Like you're not going to worry about this. You're going to worry about what you're outputting. Um, and that's why you want to make sure that this is either going to be max 1080p when you're doing it to Twitch um, with 60 FPS. You can even bump this down to 30 if you need to, um, just depending on what your internet service provider allows you to do. Um, some people don't have fast internet, so keep that in mind as well. Now, I think that's pretty much it for when it comes to setting up OBS. Now we're gonna talk about capture cards, right? So I'm gonna actually bring up my capture card here and it's a video capture device and I'm gonna name this 4K60. All right, so now it gives me the options to choose what my capture card is. So this is my capture card. As a matter of fact, let me grab my controller. And I'm gonna pull up 4K Capture Utility as well because I can actually run them simultaneously. Um, I usually check mark deactivate when not showing because I basically use it like an on and off switch. So if I do this, I can activate, deactivate. Oh, oh my. Hold on, y'all. I know it's on default settings, but hold on. I'm, I'm trying to show y'all something real quick here. And I needed to mute that because I'm actually using my speakers right now, hence no headset. All right, so we have our capture card here, right? But there's some settings that we wanna tweak. So right now I'm gonna pull up 4K Capture Utility and we're gonna talk about this program. Um, when I'm doing this, I hold down control and I click on the cog wheel so that way I can go into the settings here and configure stuff. Now, I personally use tone mapping through OBS. Um, that feature rolled out in OBS 29 and I prefer that. Now, if you prefer to have the capture card do your HDR tone, I would recommend using uh, use HDR tone mapping on device. And that's if you don't want the hassle of having to figure out how to set it up directly through OBS. Um, and that's for HDR. If you're not gonna do any HDR gaming at all, you can turn off those settings and you don't ever have to worry about it again. But a lot of people either have an HDR monitor or TV, and so they wanna see that when they're actually streaming and recording. Um, what I can tell you is if your monitor that you're streaming off of or that you're recording off of is not HDR, it, it doesn't make it HDR when you're enabling these things, right? So it's going to look washed out to you. But for the people who do have an HDR, if they're viewing it, they're going to be able to see that in HDR fine. Um, I would say be mindful of that. I really would. You can update your firmware in this. Um, usually I don't do it unless Elgato tells me to do it um, or it prompts me automatically. Cog when, when you're not doing the control cog wheel, you're not gonna see update firmware, right? So then you don't have to worry about that. But if you're doing control with the cog wheel, you're gonna see update firmware. I do not recommend hitting this button unless Elgato uh, technical support has told you to do so. Um, if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? All righty. So um, for here, I keep mine on expanded on the HDMI color range because that's what I have my console set to. I could just do it bypassing as input, 
Um, most people have it as bypassing as input, but I'm particular. I, I'm just a little extra. <laughs> so I always put mine on expand and I always put my consoles on full on the color, the RGB range. Now, um, as far as for the EDID mode, I do merged. Now, if you experience screen tearing, then you're gonna wanna do display. But because mine is a PCIe card and um, there was a variable refresh rate pass through update for this particular card, if I do it in display mode, it actually changes my resolution on my PlayStation 5 for some reason. So I just leave it as merged. And uh, I would recommend that for anybody who's currently using a 4K 60MK.2. Um, other than that, like this is really just like settings, right? Because I'm not going to use their software for recording. So this is all I need. This is how I set it up. I hit OK. I close out of here. Now on here, I come here and change a couple of things. So the resolution type for a capture card, I do custom. And the reason why is because, and I'm gonna choose the base because that's whatever the base is for the capture card. Even though I am streaming at 1080p, I'm gonna choose the base. That is the resolution. That's the base resolution, I keep it that way. And then it says, choose the uh, highest FPS. I can either reduce it to 60 or I can do highest. Now with the refresh rate passing through that the console is capable of doing a higher refresh rate, um, like for example, 120 Hertz, I am gonna choose highest FPS. Video format, it can be any, um, I leave that. I don't change that. No, um, no. Video format, any, and then color space. If you're doing HDR, this is where you choose Rec 2100 PQ, and that'll do the HDR tone mapping. Or you can choose Rec 709, right? And that's gonna be standard or you can leave it default. And your color range, you can do full. In my case, I'm doing full. You see how there's little differences that are changing? Um, and then buffering, you wanna disable buffering. Always disable buffering. And then there you go, your capture card is set up. You can play whatever game you want. And in this case, let's find a game that has a high refresh rate, like Ratchet and Clank, right? Now, if I wanted to hear the audio myself, I would go to Advanced Audio Properties where my capture card is and I would go to monitor and output, but I don't wanna do that. Actually what I do, because this is from the video source, I mute this and I basically hide this and I create a new source for audio. So that way I have one for video, one for audio. Even though the audio is capable of running it through, I will put 4K60 uh, audio. Fine, we'll relabel it, no biggie. And then I will come here and I will choose my capture card for audio and I will bring that down. Now the reason why I do this is because some people complain that they have like stuttering in audio or whatever. And uh, yeah, I don't, um, I don't ever experience that when I have them separate, one for video and one for audio. But uh, this one has a pretty high refresh rate. Oh, I can't shoot them. <laughs> I was trying. I was trying to shoot things that I shouldn't be shooting. Um, but as you can see, like there's no screen tearing. There's, it's working pretty well. And I forgot how to play the game. I would have to come back to this. But um, the whole purpose of me showing this was just to show y'all how, how it works. And maybe I should choose a different game though, right? I don't know, I don't know, but... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna turn off the capture card as well as the audio though, cause I don't ever, I don't ever game on my creative content. Um, anyways, that's gonna be for when you're doing a um, capture card. Now PC gaming, right? And we're gonna bring up, I guess, Diablo. Yeah, let's do it. Let's bring up Diablo 4. And I wanna be able to bring Diablo on, right? But we have to set it up here in OBS as well. So what I'm gonna do is come to Game Capture. And I just realized the audio, hold on, let me mute it. So it doesn't come through. And it says capture any full screen application and specific window. I'm doing specific window because I do have Diablo in a windowed mode. And we're gonna go ahead and control F to fit it in the screen here. Yep. So from here, and I mean, y'all are, y'all are seeing the recording that I'm doing while I'm having the game go. Um, my card is capable of doing a single PC setup, right? So I can actually game in Diablo. 
while doing a recording or while streaming. And uh, as long as your PC specs can handle handling um, a game and streaming at the same time, you should be good. Like, that's what the 3080 Ti is capable of. So I could be walking around here in town or whatever while I'm, uh, you know, doing a recording. And y'all are seeing the game. Y'all are seeing the whole thing. Like, this is literally capturing the game um, while I'm doing this in, in the other OBS as an example to set it up. I mean, I'm not going to be doing much in the game, but... Yeah, there's, there's a lot you can do in the game here. There's so many quests. And yes, I really am enjoying Diablo 4, for those that are wondering. But uh, I can tell you, like, this hasn't really, like, put too much stress on my GPU at all between encoding and gaming at the same time. Um, with the way the newer cards are coming out, there's not really a need to do dual PC. Um, I'm going to mention that, but depending on, you know, some people, they, they want that option where they have one just specifically for streaming and one for gaming. There is nothing wrong with that, but just keep in mind, you know, with the way technology is going, it won't really be necessary to do dual PCs. I don't really want to fight those baddies right now. I'm just giving y'all a demonstration. All right, so I'm going to exit out of the game here. And I was just giving y'all a preview. Like, it is possible to do it as a single PC setup. Um, hopefully this has helped you and a little more informed on what you can do with your settings in OBS. Um, but for those who it's just too much for them to handle, I would say just do the auto wizard. The auto wizard will set everything up uh, based off of what you have. And it takes out all of the legwork of having to figure everything out. But if you do want to try something more advanced, you can definitely go to the links below and, uh, try it out with your, uh, GPU. And if you have the same capture card I have, you can do the same. Um, speaking of capture cards, when I set up the 4K60 Pro, both uh, video and audio, um, I do recommend doing that for the HD60X as well, um, just so you don't get that little crackling sound that some people are complaining about. I personally have never experienced that. But for those who are, um, separate the audio and the video and you should be okay. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. I hope this has been informative. And you all have a lovely rest of your day.